Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at the following theorem that categorizes solutions to Euler equations. So recall that Euler equations are differential equations of the form ax squared y double prime plus bx y prime plus cy equals zero. a, b, and c are real numbers and a is non-zero. And it has uh, something associated to it called the initial polynomial, which is p of r, and that is a times r times r minus one plus b times r plus c. And let's just say that has roots r1 and r2. Then um, the solution of this differential equation on the interval zero to infinity breaks into three cases. So if r1 and r2 are distinct real roots, then we get a solution that c1 x to the r1 plus c2 x to the r2. If r1 and r2 are um, repeated real roots, then we get c1 plus c2 natural log of x, and all of that is multiplied by x to the r1. And then finally, if we have complex conjugate roots, then we have x to the lambda, and then c1 cosine mu natural log of x plus c2 sine uh, mu natural log of x. And this complex conjugate is written in a way so that mu is positive. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this. And uh, the proof uh, is built off the following observation. And that is if, um, well actually, y is a solution of um, one, if and only if, capital Y of T, which will be E, sorry, Y composed with E to the T is a solution of uh, the following. So we have the second derivative with respect to T of Y, and this is going to be multiplied by A, plus B minus A times the first derivative with respect to T of Y, plus C times this capital Y equals zero. Okay, um, good. So I'm just gonna sketch this observation. Uh, it's pretty clear how the careful proof would go with a sketch. And uh, it's really all built off of uh, the chain rule and the fact that we can view um, y in the following way. So we can view x is equal to e to the t, and so that means uh, y of t equals little y of x, which is y of e to the t. So we have this dependence tree, y depends on x, which depends on t, which is gonna help us out with our chain rule. Okay, great. So now uh, what we wanna calculate is the second derivative with respect to t of y and the first derivative of t with respect, uh, the first derivative of y with respect to t. And this is capital Y. So let's see what we get for that. So we have dy dt. So that's gonna be given by the following. So that'll be given by um, d little y dx good, times dx dt. Okay, great, and now notice uh, we can write that as y prime, and then dx dt is just e to the t, so times e to the t. But now notice that is exactly x times y prime because we have x equals e to the t. And now we'll take the derivative of that, so the second derivative of y with respect to t, so that'll be the derivative with respect to t of x times y prime. Okay, good. So now we'll use the product rule here. So we'll get dx dt times y prime, um, and then plus, x times uh, the derivative with respect to t of y prime, good. So let's see what we get for that. So this is going to be, so dx dt, so that will be e to the t, e to the t uh, y prime, good. And now here we need to use the chain rule again, so that will be plus x 
times uh, the derivative of y prime with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. Okay, good. Now again, the derivative of x with respect to t is e to the t, which is equal to x. And so uh, we can make a simplification here. So this is equal to x y prime plus, now this x and this x can combine to give us x squared y double prime. <clears throat> okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll pick up from this point. Okay, we left off at this point. So we had the substitution x equals e to the t, which makes t the natural log of x. And then we set this capital Y of t function equal to little y evaluated at e to the t. And we had y dot, which is the derivative of y with respect to t, is equal to x times y prime. And then we have y double dot, which is another notation for the second derivative of capital Y with respect to t, is x uh, y prime plus x squared y double prime. And so notice that's going to allow us to solve the following. x squared y double prime is equal to y double dot minus y dot. Okay, great. Now we can look at our original Euler differential equation, which is of the form ax squared y double prime plus bx y prime plus c. And now we can make the this substitution governed by this change of variables. So we have this is a, and now we're going to replace x squared y double prime with y double dot minus y dot. So here we have y double dot minus y dot. Great. And now we're going to take uh, x times y prime and replace it with y dot. And we get plus b y dot plus c y. And now we can rearrange this combining the like derivatives. And that will give us a y double dot plus b minus a y dot plus c y. And so in other words, We've taken this Euler differential equation, and under this change of variables, we have changed it into a constant coefficient differential equation. Okay, so uh, now that we've done that, I'll clean up the board and we'll finish it all off. So what we've just discovered is the following. Solutions of our Euler differential equation ax squared y double prime plus bxy prime plus cy equals zero are of the form y of x is this capital Y evaluated at the natural log of x, where y of t is a solution to this differential equation. So a times y double dot plus b minus a times y dot plus cy equals zero. And so notice this is a constant coefficient differential equation, which means we need to look at its characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial of this constant coefficient differential equation will be uh, the following. Um, a r squared plus b minus a r plus c. So that's the, that polynomial. But notice that this is exactly equal to um, a times r, r minus 1, plus b times r plus c, which is the initial polynomial of the original Euler differential equation. So just to be clear, the characteristic polynomial of this constant coefficient differential equation is the initial polynomial of this Euler differential equation. Okay, good. Well, now let's let r1 and r2 be roots of, you know, maybe this P of R, which we'll say that's equal to A R, R minus 1, plus B R plus C, which is just a way of rewriting the characteristic polynomial or the initial polynomial, which tells us that Y of T uh, is one of the following. So let's see. So this, if there are distinct real roots, this is C1 e to the R1t plus C2 e to the R2t. So that's if R1 and R2 are distinct and real. We have C1 plus C2t e to the R1t. That's if we have one repeated real root. 
And then finally, we, ha we have e to the lambda t, and then c1 cosine mu t plus c2 sine mu t, and that's if r1 and r2 are <clears throat> complex conjugates of each other. Okay, great. Now, from here, we will make the substitution which is um, t equals the natural log of x, which will form our solution to our differential equation as outlined kind of on the previous board. So if we set t equal natural log of x into these, here we get c1 x to the r1 plus c2 x to the r2. And then here we're going to get C1 plus C2, natural log of x, x to the r1. Good. And then finally down here, we're going to get x to the lambda. And then we'll have C1 cosine mu times natural log of x plus C2 sine of mu times natural log of x. Good, but those are exactly the solution types which are given by the conclusion of the theorem. And so that finishes the proof.